let's just say it's 100 bucks. Well, that $100 is the total amount they can save. You use that and then follow these guidelines and set up those accounts. I, in the past, I've been, you know, I do exactly what they said. Oh, I can just save that at the bank. Well, they don't. Yeah, they can save it at the bank, but they don't. Yeah, they could go and get online and get a life insurance quote, but they don't. Yeah, they could pick up the phone and say 15 minutes and 15%, but they don't. That's why they need us. Part of, I'm, I'm doing a training, and I don't know if any of you saw the RVP presentation from Glenn Williams yesterday, but I thought it was phenomenal. He talked about the statistics of life insurance sales versus uh, by a human versus all other forms. And he, he took the stats from 1990 until today, and it stayed steady at 4%. 4% of all life insurance is sold by the internet, by sending somebody a mailer, by Gerber Life, by now MetLife at Walmart, which is so silly. And 95% is sold by humans. People aren't going to do it. People aren't going to go to the library and learn about diversification and wealth building. They're not going to do it. They need you. People aren't going to get in shape. They need a fitness trainer, right? If they, they know how to do it, okay, eat better. Look, you can go Google dietary supplement plan, but if you got somebody like Edgar saying, do this, don't do this, lift here, don't lift here, you're going to be better at it. That's us. That's why people need us, but we have to build value in that. So depending upon their amount of money, then you go into something called dollar cost averaging. Dollar cost averaging is very, very important to overcome the fear of investment. Right. Because people say, yeah, but the stocks are up, the stocks are down. If you understand dollar cost averaging, you make money while the stocks are down. So you need to explain this to people. But he, he suggests, Igor, or Igor, Omar suggests, not to get into any of the specifics until you understand that person's needs. He gets into the difference between a small cap, medium cap, large cap, and mega cap. You're not going to talk about that with somebody setting up a $50 a month pack. No. That's not necessary, and it's going to go way over their head. $50 a month pack, what do you explain? Dollar cost averaging. We're going to show them systematically, over time, it's better for you in a fluctuating market. So get this and understand how to explain it. I'm not going to go over that for lack of time, but you explain that to somebody. Then, let me see that. Can I see that, Igor? What, what he talks about is going over their investment profile questionnaire. You have a lot of people that are nervous because they're nervous because they don't know what to recommend. You're saying, well, I just got my license and I don't really know too much more about investing than, than you do. And so their vulnerabilities, first of all, you do know more about than most people, but go over this risk tolerance profile. And it's in this, you can find a lot of different forms, but it's in the invest the Invesco brochure. And Nick, really quick on that, I you have to preface it. Say, say Nick, when I'm setting up your emergency fund, we understand you're gonna need this money in zero to two years. So you're gonna answer these questions based on when you need the money. So when we ask these questions on your wealth building account, the answers are gonna be completely opposite. You have to preface that because right. I've been, I'm a principal, and Phil was making this error. He wasn't making it by, by uh, fault of his own. It's just that he was answering, he would teach, and everybody would answer the questions like it's an emergency fund. I was getting these Roth IRAs with 11, 12, 13 points on the score. <laughs> and you put them in aggressive growth. Right. right. And so it's just understand. So, so what Steve is saying is depending upon, yeah. Depending upon which one of these you're talking about, yep. the answer is going to determine differently here. And really, you should know if you do a FNA, you should know this and this. I mean, you really shouldn't need to ask them to confuse them. If you're doing a risk profile tolerance for all three accounts, you're going to confuzzle them, right? You should know this. This is no risk. This is liquidity, right? It gives you an example in here on what you should use in Vesco's money market fund. It gives you an example on the short-term account, an income fund, a pretty, it tells you exactly. Now, the question is, where do you put them for retirement? And that's what most people's concern is and their interest is. So you do the, the risk tolerance profile. I won't go through this, but it's pretty easy. If 
figure out their age, ask them these questions, and then depending upon their total points, let's say their total points are 31. Then you take out, oh, it's on here. Then you take out this, which is the Invesco Securities Profile Matrix. So let's say their number is 31. So you go to where their number is. Does that make sense? It goes all the way from income all the way up to high growth. 31 is a growth portfolio. How much are they investing? They have a rollover of 50000 or they have $50 a month. So go up to the top here. And the silver portfolio says, for $50 a month, use the top fund. Can you see that? So $50 a month, if you invest in Invesco Comstock or Cornstock, if you want to say. If they have 100 then you invest in the top two. If they have 150 use the top three, because you can only set up $50 minimum per fund. So that's if they have from fifty dollars a month to invest to one hundred and fifty dollars. I just saw a call from yesterday. You can do twenty-five with Invesco only, even though the application says fifty, like with other funds like Mason. Yes, I know. It's only but Invesco only, only all their funds they, they accept twenty-five dollars per fund. So down to twenty-five dollars. I would use that as a drop, but understand $25 isn't going to build them any right. kind of you that much. The 50, <laughs> but start them at baby steps if they can, you know, if they can do 50, right? If, if they have $250 a month, go gold. If they have $20,000 lump sum or $1,000 a month, now you diversify them further. It's pretty dang easy. You go through the investment profile, whatever their number is, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to ask these questions. If their number is a 20, then you go down to moderate. And how much do they have? They got 50 bucks. Boom, there you go. The Invesco Equity and Income. Go to the back here. Invesco Equity and Income. Figure out the symbol. Put it in your Turbo Apps. It is simple. You can even go through the Turbo Apps and you can do practices. So do a practice. So when you go there, it's just like Anna was talking about. Oh, you're not messing up going, oh, crap, uh, it's not showing up here. Uh, do it a couple times so you know what you're doing. You go in there, you explain dollar cost averaging, you get their risk tolerance, and you get tie downs too. For instance, listen, Igor, if I can show you how to go from a debt cycle to a cash cycle, can you think of any reason you wouldn't want me to be your investment guy? Don't say, can you think of any reason you wouldn't consider? No. Has anybody else shown you how to get from a debt cycle to a cash cycle, Igor? No. Nope. So if I can do that, can I be your investment guy? And wait, and let it be awkward. Uh, well, I don't know if I... No, you've got to feel comfortable with it, obviously. If we can create a plan that you feel comfortable with, can I be your investment guy? Well, let me show you what that's going to mean, right? Let me show you. And then you get them. Step one, pay yourself first. Step two, show them. Get out of debt. Go over the debt stack. And in this plan, there it actually shows you a debt stack too, which you should, I think, much more powerful than hypothetical, is using their exact numbers. Plug in their numbers. We did, me and Andrea did one. How many debts did she have? 13? <laughs> like she had 13 different debts, and she was doing exactly what most people do, paying a little bit extra on every single debt instead of attacking one debt. So I think the knowledge is power. Was that, you have a question or one minute left? One minute. Okay. So I don't, I don't know if that was helpful or not, but ultimately Good. all he does is build value in the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Telling people they need to learn isn't going to incentivize them to learn. Hey, you really should learn. Okay, I'm going to learn now. <laughs> does that make sense? Say, look, if you knew, look, let me show you the difference. Now, does that incentivize you? Is that the carrot to say you want to learn? And if it's not, then it's not. Then you move on. But if it is... Then you've got a client and you build and value in your build value in yourself. Yeah, so on the profile you just do it for the wealth building. You don't need to do it with the other people. You can, but I mean use your use your discretion. I don't really think you need to. Okay. I mean, especially not for 